Hello, everybody. Has the heat kicked in yet at home? Maybe it's getting a little bit cooler. Well, with only two days left until our Halloween, we are officially getting into quilting season. So uh, before you're tempted to get your fabric, stash, uh, your fabric stash out and bust into that next project, what if the fabrics don't play well together? What if everything you've thought of isn't going to work? Well, today we're going to make an easy project to test out the fabric choices before you commit to making that entire quilt. Sound good? If so, let's start the show. Hey streamers, today is October 29th, 2021, and this is The Quilt Stream. I am Chip Connor, I am your host, and happy Friday, everybody. Has it been a like incredibly fast week? I feel like just yesterday, it was Tuesday, and I just got over my first episode, and then all of a sudden, I wake up today, and it's Friday. But I'm actually excited. It is going to be a good show today because here in the live uh, quilt stream studio, I'm gonna be doing some live sewing. Lord help me, I've got a bundle of nerves and take heart, whatever I do is going to go out to the rest of the world and whatever you do stays at home, so no pressure. Uh, today, uh, we are gonna work on a project to help test out the fabric choices that you're making. And before you make that entire quilt, let's go ahead and think of a ways that we could start testing out your designs with one small project. Now, before we launch into today's project, let's take a look and see who we've got in the room. Thank you so much to everybody who has come in. We've got Fizz, we've got Angel, who else? We've got Kathleen, I love her. And Brendan, Mr. Berg, thank you for joining. And everybody who has uh, chimed in so far, thank you so much for your kind words of encouragement. Yeah, sewing live is gonna be like, it's like the end of the month and you're trying to give that credit card to the cashier. You're like, is this fabric purchase gonna take? So yeah, bundle of nerves, but let's see if we can push through. All right, uh, one house coping, keeping note. If you've got a question, I would love you to start your question out um, with a question mark and that way in my little magical uh, online driving machine I can filter right to the questions I may not have the answer but hopefully somebody in the chat may or somebody later in the comments could address that question so if you've got a question start it up with a question mark that's how this game works so I have been thinking about making a crazy quilt for some time. Um, if you're not familiar with a crazy quilt, let me share with you. They are so, so popular. No, we don't want that. We're going to go, yeah, we're going to go to Chrome. So if you take a look at these crazy quilts, it is absolutely, no pun intended, crazy. There are so many different takes on what a crazy quilt is and these came about in the late 1800s and were really really popular through the early 1900s and a crazy quilt is actually inspired by uh, ceramics and if you've ever seen a ceramic whatever it might be and there's like that that crackling once upon a time that was considered a defect but then that crackling people started really appreciating and it was the ceramics and that art industry uh, i'm sorry art community that inspired the quilting community so people started running with it and they started getting the best of the best fabrics the crazy quilts were not meant to be um like a full-size bed like some of these google images now show um, people didn't have as much access to a diverse uh, array of fabrics, but what they did was really focus on more lap size or even something that would hang on the wall. And it was a way that um, people 
uh, mostly women at that time, but it was the way people could sh really show off their stitching skills. So they would do very intricate stitching and it was fabric that was placed onto other fabric and it was like they may only have a little piece that was from a dress or from some curtains, but they actually, um, they really, really changed the way people were looking at art and uh, quilting. Uh, Brendan's got a comment. He says, there we go. The great thing about Crazy Quilt is that you can use some of the thousand stitch options on our machines. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Brendan because uh, there was a reason why I spent so much money on this machine. <laughs> so I would encourage you to check out Crazy Quilts um, here, right here on YouTube land. I'll put it in the comments later. Um, but in YouTube, PBS, they had a really lovely um, quick segment on Crazy Quilts at the International Museum and there is so much content out there. If you're interested in learning more, the more you know. Love it. All right, so uh, I have actually something exciting to share with everybody is that I am now a go-getter for AccuQuilt. I am a brand ambassador and it is crazy, no pun intended, I guess today's um, episode is all about crazy, that they actually, I love AccuQuilt. When I first um, encountered AccuQuilt, I don't know how many years ago, uh, I think it was like three years ago when I first started quilting. And I was with a friend and he showed me, he says, you gotta check these out, you gotta check these out. And I was just like, yeah, I hate cutting. <laughs> I don't like cutting, nobody does. And if you do, come to my house because I got plenty of work for you. But uh, it, I was like, oh my gosh, and how much is this, you know, and I was, I was thinking about it. And the, I kid you not, the, um, Pam Heller, who is part of the AccuQuilt team, was there at the quilt show and she cut this lovely piece of fabric out and she says, here, put this in your pocket. You'll be back. I was. And with my purchase, it was so large. I got the AccuQuilt go big. I got the dies uh, in like, they saw me coming. And I have not made a, I promise you 100%, I have not made a quilt without AccuQuilt since. I use it for my strip cutting. I call, use it for my um, piecing and I absolutely adore it. So. I'm so excited and what I really love about it is that they are just like, I see you. And I was like, you see me? And they're like, yeah, we saw your stuff on Fiber Hustle. And I'm like, it blew my mind. So I am so happy to partner up with them. So with that said, the funny thing was, um, I had such a huge collection of dyes um, from AccuQuilt that in my library, I don't even know what's there. And for uh, a couple weeks now, I've been wanting to make a crazy quilt. And I was like looking at the die and I was like, and I just kept forgetting. Thank God I didn't order it because I was looking <laughs> this week. I was looking in my uh, my fabric kingdom downstairs where I hold all my storage. And there there it was my crazy quilt um, die cutter. And I was like, oh, my God, I forgot I bought this. <laughs> So, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take you through how I used it, and it was very funny. I mean, like you don't want to tell Aaron that I really actually don't know how much is in my AccuQuilt library. But the idea is, um, the Crazy Quilt die is going to take ten different shapes, and this happens to be the ten-inch Crazy Quilt size. There's actually um, a six inch size and these will only fit in the go big so if you have one of the the hand cranks um that like the go me it won't fit you don't be cranky go big um but yeah so it's going to take there's 10 different shapes to make up one 10 inch finished um crazy quilt block and that means you could actually do 10 different fabrics and so this is the whole this is the whole point is that you know when you're 
when you're auditioning fabrics. And what do we all do? We lay out our fabrics and let me go down. So you lay out your fabrics and you're starting to audition and see what is going to play together. And you're like, yeah, I like that. And I like this. I don't like this. I love this. And before you know it, you've come up and found your 10, um, your 10 fabrics. But then, and here's a, here's a black one. But then when you actually get it and you're starting to cut up all of your pieces and you're starting to form the block, then all of a sudden you're like, mm, I don't know how this is going to look. But you're still a little unsure and you're still going to push through. And then by the time you cut out all your blocks and you've now passed the point of safe return because you've already um, cut into your fabric, then you're piecing and then all of a sudden you're just finding yourself like, hey, <laughs> oops, it's, these aren't playing well together. So what I'm suggesting is that before you actually commit to that quilt, try a, like a dry run. Here is something that I came up with, and I, ki I kid you not, I made this yesterday in a couple of hours. This is a placemat, and it's going to show just one block, but what's really great is that it really shows me how my colors are going to play together. And then, I love it. I'm going to, you could give these as gifts, you could treat yourself, and I was just wondering, when does the, um, when does autumn actually end? And I think Aaron found for me that it ends, um, yeah, autumn ends on December 21st. So we have plenty of time. This is going to have a lot of shelf life um, ahead of it. So I've made one and I've got three more in the works. I still have to do the binding on them. But I will show you once we get one of these blocks made, I'm going to show you um, everything else to get the placemat if that's something that you would choose to make. I mean, really, it could be a it could be a little bag. It could be uh, a tea towel, depending on how si how big the block is. But whatever, um, I really suggest auditioning and have something that you can say, stand back, show it to a, a friend, post it online, see what kind of comments you get and see if it's going to work before you commit to making that full quilt. So um, the one nice thing about this block is it is layer cake friendly and whether that's the 10 inch or the six inch block you get. Um, if you wanted to, you could dive into your jelly rolls and um, actually the jelly roll won't work on this because this is more than two inches on that um, on that one side. Let me go down. Yeah, so some of these pieces are just too wide to do a, um, a jelly roll, but if you want to, you have your um, fabric stash and then you're just going to go diving or if you want to do a fat quarter, whatever, it will work. So how to tackle this? This is actually one of the easiest um, projects that I have made in a long while. And I just have to get my block straight. So I'm going to look at this. Let's go down again. I'm going to look at this by going, I work on it counterclockwise. So this is piece A, piece C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And you work your way around and then you start making the bigger pieces. So together, let's go ahead and make a... Uh, Let's do some live sewing, y'all. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to do this. Okay, so my iron is hot. And one thing that I would say about this, um, if you have uh, experience with uh, bias cuts, this, has, this is all bias cuts. So you're going to want to be careful. And I'm going to, for the sake of making sure that everything lines up, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, fabric gluing and just three little dots just to get the pieces together. And that way they hopefully will turn out clean. And I do see some people saying hi to each other and I absolutely love it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm trying to be as random as possible. 
And so I'm just going to take A to B. And the beautiful thing, let's see if I can do that again. So now I have A to B. And there is a little notch here. So I will go ahead and do a little dot. I'm, just, no, I'm not going to go crazy, but this glue is going to help the fabric stay in place. And if you, if you do this by hand without gluing, it just depends on how strong your muscles are. So I'm going to set the glue very quickly. And then our first piece should be good to sew. Great. So I've got that. And now I know it's not going to move. And he's doing it, gang. Boom. Done. Now, they do recommend that we... I got my little guillotine. They do recommend to um, iron to the dark side, which all of these, except for just a couple, are already pretty dark. I'm sorry, press to the dark side. And good, we're off. We've done piece one. Now we're gonna go to piece three. And I'm just gonna do a quick glue. And let's see how fast we can actually make this entire block. I never really appreciated the crazy quilts until recently when I've been thinking about for the new year doing um, Lord help me some hand sewing. I think I'm more nervous about hand sewing than I am about live sewing. All right, so we're going to There we go. But I've been thinking about doing some hand sewing, which w made me think of like, oh, the different stitches, like all the worlds are colliding and the, the crazy quilt stitches are really awesome because they really do show off your, your skills and people who maybe, um, people who maybe embroider There we go. People who embroider probably will love crazy quilts. And my tip would be if you're going to, um, if you're going to show off your stitches, then you may want to tone down the fabric itself, or at least pick an embroidery uh, floss that is really going to pop against that. So this is going to be our first segment completed. And then Aaron always laughs, I say, and then we're going to go to piece, what is that, D and E. And I'm trying to get some variation throughout. All right, so I'm going to pick that guy and this guy. When it comes to this first part, easy breezy. You don't have to read any instructions. You're just piecing them together. When it comes to assembling them, I start to get myself confused. And so that way, we're going to go to the phone. I have a saved file there so I remember what to do. I was that way last night when I was uh, binding. I don't know about you guys, but every time I go to bind a quilt, and you're at that last step and you're like, okay, which, which goes on top and then which way do you sew? All right, can we go to the needle? Yes, we can. I'll try not to get my sausage fingers in the way. And I uh, absolutely, <laughs> I'm a sucker for watching other people work. So if you're like me, this should be a lot of fun for you. All right, let's come back. 
and we've got our first piece done. We are well on our way. All right, and then we're going to go to what's that? A, B, C, D, E. We're going to go to F and G. So I haven't used. I haven't used the white in a while. And I love this orange. Um, one thing I forgot to say is that this is Bohemian Rhapsody. The fabric line is Bohemian Rhapsody from QT Fabrics. When I saw this, this was not one that I was like, mm, I would love to have that fat quarter bundle. I went with the yard bundle and I got every blessed color because th it was one of those fabrics that you, you just, I fell in love with. It's just the, the colors are so saturated. And what I really like is that a lot of the, the fabric lines are becoming really smart about uh, incorporating ombres into the fabric bolt and so like you'll get the width of bolt and like on one side it's really light and then on the other side it's really dark and it gives you so much more so like if in this project you know i didn't actually have to have 10 different fabrics because i was able to go from the light side and cut also from the dark side just took a little pre-planning and okay we're good there yeah sometimes i have to remember which way to lay so have any of you guys i'm going to check in with uh those who are with us have any of you guys already done a, a crazy quilt and if if so have you tackled the uh, tackled the, what is it called? The stitching. All right, this is a really good piece. This is gonna be my center, I think. Yeah, let's do it. I think Brendan, Brendan, did you? Someday I'm going to have you guys sewing live with me. <laughs> Would you like that? You can come on and I'll zoom you in and you can show us the ropes. Brendan, I will say you are so inspiring. And he doesn't like, if memory serves right, Brendan, you don't like things that are too repetitious. So this could be fun for you because you can play with colors and shapes. And actually it is a really quick make. So, you know, I, I was thinking like a crazy quilt could be a really nice wedding gift. And, but if it's like, I love these placemats because those could be a good gift. So look at this, guys. We are almost to the finish line. Look at this. We are all ready. So I need, let me get a yellow, and then I'll show you what we've got so far. All right. We're going to do this piece. It really does go together quickly. <laughs> I love it. Brendan has uh, our friends at Aki Quilt would be so happy. I have the Aki Quilt Studio 2 die. Wait a minute, isn't that the big black one? Like the like mine. So the Aki Quilt, you can cut up to six layers. And did I just mess myself up? No, I'm right. Um, you can cut up to six layers. 
And <laughs> oh, I almost made a mistake, gang. Oh, I caught myself. Um, so the AccuQuilt Go Big, you can do up to six layers. And actually, you can on the Go Me as well. I am by no means uh, knowing all the features of all of the products. I just have a lot of the products. But I think the Studio, um, the Studio 2 is the big one. So that's like for people who are doing big mega jobs. Why is that not lining up? Did I cut a piece wrong? No, we're right, we're right, we're right. Is it this way? There we go. Okay, Charles. When I'm in trouble, I call myself Charles. There we go. Okay, that was the last one. And then with a quick press. That was scary. And it's coming together. So we have this and that and that. All right, so now uh, if I can quickly take this off. Now I'm going to show you on the down I've got these three pieces I'm sorry four pieces to cut to put together so they're subunits and so originally we worked our way from right to left now we're going to go clockwise so starting with the last piece that we were working on we're going to go back and make our way through and more glue All right, perfect. And then just flip. And we'll set that glue. All right. So we have and one thing I should say, um, what I do love is that you've got these um, notches. So the way that the, 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 the fabric is cut, it automatically has notches. So when you're piecing things together, you're going to be able to see that everything should line up. And then I'm trying to get, uh, do I have something to point? Yes. All right, so then when I'm setting my, my needle down, I'm aiming for that point. This is your quarter inch uh, seam allowance, and I'm going to start with that point. Perfect. All right, so we are almost halfway finished. Are you guys feeling the, the desperation already setting in, like all of these holiday makes that are, that are on your plate? I know that Fizz has 900 projects on the on the board right now and all I can say is fizz you did it to yourself <laughs> um, but she I asked her um, this past week fizz who's uh, in the chat now I I said fizz do you go by a digital or a um, or a written planner and she said yeah she has a written one and the first thing that she does in the morning, she goes to the mirror where her, dre or her dressing table 
and before um, <laughs> she looks at her planner of what she has she wants to accomplish and she has so many projects going she looks at what she has to accomplish she says oh you know what and then she puts her perfume on <laughs> I guess that's for good luck I love it and everything is top secret uh, everything she's making is so generous she doesn't make for herself she just she doesn't do a lot of selfish um, crafting I know she knits she sews and now she's doing other things so Fizz you are a rock star and guess what gang we have one more piece to do and then we have our first block done and it really is that easy. So if I can manage to knock one block out in 15, 20 minutes, and I'm not the fastest sewer, then I'm sure you guys will kill it. And I, I'm making myself, it, will, it was only since this past summer that I started gluing when I'm working with bias. And I, I find that it is my friend. It does take that much more. You don't have to do it, but it just keeps everything from slipping and sliding. And I, I just feel like it makes me better. I don't feel like I'm stretching. Um, my seams or the fabric itself and I have a better chance of it turning out the shape it should be. Now for straight piecing, I'm not worried about it. Okay, let's do this last seam. Booyah. Done. Give it a press. And we are done. So there you go. Let me see it. You have your crazy quilt block, and it did finish. Now, it's supposed to, Tracy over at Curly Seams always is impressing upon me to the need for doing sanity checks. And I have always been bad about that, but this is supposed to be 10 and a half inches, and it's actually just a little more than 10 inches. No, it, it's right on 10 inches, so I, I think I'm good. That is amazing. So what can you what can you do? So this this fabric um, is in some areas pretty busy. Like this yellow is really busy. So I might work on the stitching if I was going to. Like maybe you could put the gold in in the uh, on top of the orange or maybe you know against this black there really is a lot of potential there for you to go the full crazy quilt route see i'm noticing my i didn't iron very well there we go play nice there we go so we have one so now i uh have a block and I want to literally yesterday I didn't know that I was going to be making a um, placemat I was just looking for an idea like what could I do now that I have this and I kind of see I like it but like what could I do to make it so I'm not wasting the block I had strips that I originally made for a different project and these were six inch strips yeah, I used my AccuQuilt six inch strip. And then I was like, oh, well, wait a minute. 
it, immediately it was playing together. It's actually the black is the um, the good side, and I like the back side. When I originally bought this fabric, I knew that I was going to be using the gray side because it just it works like a nice blender. So what I could do then is come up with. Actually, I'm just going to cut this in half, and then we'll square it up, because that would be easy. I get, treated myself to a new blade today. Oop, I have a garbage can. And now I have, oh my gosh. I really just cut that at 10 inches. Like I was eyeballing that one side. Woo, I was cutting it close. So let me get my little starter. Do you guys use a starter? I have just always gotten in the habit of using one so that the fabric that I'm working on doesn't get sucked down into the needle plate. one and let's do the second one and the nice thing about these um, placemats if this is the route you want to try out oh, did I lose my thread I did I did The nice thing about these um, placemats is that not only can you randomize your, your fabric, but then you can also randomize the, or rotate the block itself. So it really does seem like you're getting a lot more variation. And, you know, when we look at things, our eyes are always looking for patterns and with Rotating this particular block, it really does help give you that variety that your that a crazy quilt should come with. Then, if you're getting the idea, we have a now we're starting to look like a placemat. And the next thing I do is decide um, what size actually do you want. So a standard. Um, placemat is 18 inches by 14 inches. The one I've made is 15 inch by 11 inch. But really, there is no there is no for, um, set in stone size to make because have you ever been at a dining table or a little dinette versus like a grand dining table? So a dinette, you know, you may have just this little bit of space and sometimes you get a placemat and they're butting up against each other or you're having to overlap them. So really let the size of the table tell you how big that placemat should be. But the one that I made was uh, 15 by 11 inches. So for this place placemat, you're gonna have a 10 inch finished block. And then the side strips that I did were three inches. So I uh, took these gray pieces on, on the side here and then we're gonna trim them down to three inches. And then we need a top and a bottom. Let me show you the, um, the finished one again. The top and the bottom, I like it because it kind of looks cinematic. And I love that I didn't put the black on the sides too. Uh, because it just, sometimes with a, a border, it just makes you feel closed in. Whereas if you have something that doesn't feel like it has that border, it just goes on to a, a affinity, infinity. And so I just was like, hmm, I'm going cinematic. And so if that's your choice, then again, there are no rules, um, but you could do a one inch. And what did I say? What size was that? The top and the bottom, I, it was one inch. Yeah, so with a one inch, 
uh, this is not the one inch. Let me get the one inch, which is smaller. Okay, with this one inch, you can see that when you when you apply this, it is going to be only a quarter of an inch that you're actually sewing because you're not really going to be sewing anything on the other side. So you're only losing a quarter of an inch. So my finished one wound up being a finished um, like three quarters of an inch. So once you decide what the top and the bottom are going to be, then you can decide, all right, how am I going to finish this? So you've got your, your sides all cut up. Then you're going to um, have your back, uh, backing fabric, and it could be something from, the, from one of the other prints. And I chose the, the light gray on the back, but it really is. And here you can kind of see it's darker to this side, and then it starts to go to lighter. Um, and this was all from the same, from the same width, uh, I'm sorry, the same bolt of fabric. So you can see there is variation. All of this was from one, and it really went from light, light, light to dark, dark, dark. I love this Bohemian Rhapsody uh, fabric. So I see a question. So Scott, he was asking, do you match your thread to the colors of your fabric you're piecing? I absolutely did. So I did my best to I took all my black fab, uh, black thread and then black thread on the back. And you know me, I did not hand bind this. <laughs> it's all machine binded. And then I used a gray thread for my top stitching. You don't have to. I mean, it just depends on if that's the look that you're, you know, does, does, the, uh, does the thread color make sense? Sometimes it'll add a little zest. Like maybe you could have done gold, but it really depends on that on that crazy quilt. If you're doing all that hand stitching, maybe you don't want to take attention away from what your artwork was. So then all the more reason to blend. But you've got your backing fabric and then you're going to lay that down. And then just like a quilt sandwich, you're going to lay your batting down and then you're going to lay your freshly pieced together and then you're going to come up with your almost finished placemat. Zachary Loomis, hello, hello. And then you can see if, you, if I had done the outside border, I mean, like this just really does close it in. And it's a matter of taste. But I wanted to keep it a little bit open, but you see how much it actually closes everything in. And that's why I was like, nope, I like it nice and open. It's already a heavy, um, heavily saturated color palette to work with. So yeah, I didn't do that. Now, the fun part. Let's take a look at what a plate looks like. <laughs> So I have my dinner plate already, and I don't even know what size plate this is. This is a nine, it's not quite, it's about ten and three, uh, ten and a quarter big. And it, I think this is pretty good. This is a good size, you know, a nice size. But, you know, I haven't had lunch yet, so what if we, what if we do a little bit of, tomato soup and then maybe you can have a nice you know bring out your favorite this has always been my favorite utensils you know I'm gonna have lunch after this yum yum <laughs> that's my it really is it's good tomato soup <laughs> all right so that is my uh, tip for today would be don't do the whole huge quilt first. Don't find that you've cut all these pieces just to realize that you're going to have to go out and shop for more fabric. Try a smaller project and maybe you'll wind up with extra gifts, but it really is a good way of um, 
maybe testing the waters, make something and then share it with your friends because it's so much harder to just line up your, your fabric side by side and really get an idea of what you're making. Um, and you have gifts and you can treat yourself to something. So um, let's see, any last comments? Was there any questions that I missed? Nope, we're good. And I love it. Scott and, and um, Angel are definitely having conversation here. So yeah, this is what it's supposed to be about. It's not just me and you, it's you and the community. And I love that. So thank you very much. We're gonna wrap up from here. Um, I've got bingo that I'm hosting with Aaron tomorrow and we are so excited for that. Um, if you're not like, what's, what's the bingo? Well, check out Fiber Hustle um, on Instagram and on YouTube because you could get into the Christmas bingo and uh, the quilt stream is not officially a part of that, but I've got bingo. So thank you very much. I'm going to see you on Monday, same time, same channel, and I appreciate you. And if you could like and subscribe, that really is going to help the channel. And I wish you a great weekend. Keep it safe. Have, have a safe and happy Halloween, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.